Welcome in, I think, maybe, possibly. Yeah, you're here. Okay, great. Hey, welcome into the CHGO Bears podcast on a Royalty Friday. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Uh, Mark Carmen, Nicholas Moriato joined. We're calling this, uh, this is a big day in the history of the CHGO Bears podcast. We're calling it Beat Writer Fridays now. And Mark Potash, you are the first person from the Chicago Sun-Times, Chicago Royalty, to be here on Beat Writer Friday. So I don't know if that's congratulations or just appreciation. Oh, I'll accept it. That's quite an honor. I appreciate it. I'll take every honor I can get. Well, <laughs> you're, you, uh, you've you been doing this for a couple of minutes now, Mark, and you always have thoughts and you ask some of the best questions in the room. And it is one of the, uh, and Nick, by the way, hi, how are you, buddy? What's going on? I'm here with two Marks. I can't think of a better way to spend my Friday. So I'm doing great. Well, and in the spirit of podcasting, because everybody wants you to jump right in, I think we can jump right in here. And by the way, I'm going to have to jump right out to the right because I believe that my dog is eating something massive that she shouldn't be eating right now, which is terrifying me as I uh, the noises are. Oh, no, no. I, I think I'm good. Thank you very much, Poppy. You go get that chew. I gave you a chew. It's not the Starbucks that I didn't finish. All right, Mark. Is this the most interesting time in Bears history for you? If we take, you know, let's let's say between now and say nineteen, like when Ditka left, this this feels like the Bears are a national story. The Bears are interesting. The Bears are borderline fun. The Bears could be good. Like I don't know how you're looking at this, but it feels like your life covering the team is about to change. Yeah, you know, the Bears have been one of the most interesting teams to cover for a team that really hasn't won a lot in the last 30 years. But this is by far, I think, or maybe not by far, but certainly significantly the most interesting time for no reason that with all of everything that's going on, no matter how much which way they turn, they can't lose as far as going into the season feeling pretty good about what they've done. Even if Justin Fields were still here and they had uh, and they had a bunch of picks with them and, and had a shot at Marvin Harrison Jr., that was going to be a a, a, a a team you'd think could make should make the playoffs. And, and, and they'll be in the same situation with Caleb Williams. So my point is that the Bears, no matter what they did, they could not really lose as far as getting to tr- training camp. After that, as we all know, who any, anything can happen. But as far as just uh, all the tumult of, of an off season and the debate and all the talk and as as difficult as, as suffocating as it can be, uh, this is really pretty good for for the Bears. Mark, does with how long you've been covering this team and with all that's going on right now with this current Bears team, does it does it feel different? Does it feel like there's a light at the end of the tunnel for what may happen for Ryan Poles and his new regime, or does this kind of just feel like? Hey, it's optimism going it's, into a new yeah, season, or is it different? That's a good question, Nick. For me, because um, I think for almost any, or for most people, I think it really is uh, different and a time where everything seems more legitimate. But for me, I've been through so many of these going back to the '90s that um, I, I just keep fearing the worst, and and it's just a it's a it's an innate skepticism, or a, a, maybe not innate, but a, a learned uh, skepticism that. What can go wrong? Yeah, you know, just thinking the other day is like, you know, polls really made, I thought, the best movie can make or the movie had to make by by trading Justin Fields. But when you look at what he got for it, it in a normal situation, you would have kept him, but you couldn't keep him. But here's what's good. Here's what could happen. What if what if what if Caleb Williams gets hurt early in the year? And who would you have turned? Who would you want to turn to? Uh, in that case, it, it'd be, then you'd be saying, why didn't why didn't they keep Justin Fields? And that's like a worst case scenario. But my point is, when you've been through so many of these things, what can go wrong? And you see everything going wrong. That's what the kind of things you think of is, wow, what what can go wrong? But really, almost any time you talk about skepticism and, and people come back and say, well, this is different. Yes, it is different. I mean, look at the supporting cast now they've got for this new quarterback. And more importantly than anything else, I think, look at the defense. When the Bears have had good offenses before or – like I guess 13 would probably be the best example because they had Trestman, they had all those weapons and in in Brandon Marshall and Cutler and Forte and Bennett and and the defense fell apart. 
Okay. Uh, whenever they've had a good defense, the offense has been a problem. This now you're looking at an offense that really should be pretty good or making them make it up. But now you, you, the defense should be a lock. The defense should be a top 10 defense. And a lot of things can go wrong there too. They're a little thin on that side of the ball. Uh, you know, one injury, as we saw, you know, like when Jalen Johnson was out against Green Bay, uh, uh, they they just they, they just uh, they they lit him up, and they only scored 17 points, which I thought was which mm -hmm. is pretty good, but uh, but still, uh, Jordan Love just you know, just tore him apart. So you can see with you can see that they that they that they're uh, that they have some weaknesses, but on the uh, by the overall point is even on defense. They're better off than they were in other situations where they've had, you know, this kind of optimism. So I guess the general point is that I, I agree. I think this is I think people have every reason to feel optimistic uh, going into the season. But just just brace yourself. Just, you know, put your seatbelt on when you when you get to training camp. Yeah, there, there's there's no doubt. And I think Bears fans look at it. I look at it. Look, they won seven games last year. They could have won 10 games last year. They, in theory, hopefully have a better quarterback. They're, in theory, better up front. They're, in theory, better. They should – I don't even think in theory we could say. They're better at wide receiver right now. So they have Montez Sweat for a whole year. How does this compute as far as wins go? They're still playing a bottom-of-the-tier schedule. Like, uh, everything lines up for them to be a playoff team next year, which is at least part of the optimism. But for me, it's more long-term optimism. Because I think they're going to get the quarterback right. I think that Caleb is going to be good. And if that is the case, it's something that we haven't seen uh, ever, really, in, in in Chicago. So, right? I mean... Uh, I, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I just I, I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think the big picture, when I'm looking at the Bears, we talk so much about you know next year and the draft and this and that. But, you know, the Bears are the only team in the NFL in the, since... They, since the end of the Ditka era that has not had three consecutive playoff seasons or three consecutive winning seasons, every other team, including the Jets, the, the, the uh, Commanders, the, the Lions, the Raiders, all these other teams that are kind of in that, that in that same spot, they have not even had that. And that's all you really ask for as a fan. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, you don't expect to become like the Patriots. Or even, or even what uh, you know looks looks like the Chiefs have. But man, just have a four, nice four or five year run. That's really what the Dick era was. That was a nice five six year run that they didn't max out on. It's still disappointing, but at least they had that. And the Bears haven't even had that. And I think as a fan, or at least well, my own fandom, I, that's what I would. That's what I hope. I you know, I don't mind the up and down years or whatever, the up and down eras, but just give us one solid uh, five year block where you always think they can win the Super Bowl. And I think, uh, you know, that's at least the first step, uh, you know, towards, you know, giving Bears fans what they want. Let, let's jump into a little draft here. And uh, I was I was looking at the Sun-Times mock uh, that you put out, Mark. And, um, you know, uh, this was this was uh, this is Patrick Finley's work. Shout out to Patrick Finley. Um, but it, it's got the Bears taking Roma Dunze at nine and and not to quibble with Patrick. And, and I think he could very well be right there. But in his mock, he's got Michael Penix going 12 to the Broncos, Bo Nix going 13 to the Raiders. And, in, you know, in front of that, he's got J.J. McCarthy, the Vikings, trading up to five. So you got four quarterbacks going, and then you've got 12 and 13 taking QBs um, with the Jets taking Bowers and the Chargers dropping down and taking a tackle, a tackle in Fuaga. I mean, I if the board plays that way, I would expect the Bears to trade down with 12 or 13 for one of those teams trying to go up and get a QB and try to extract at least a later round pick to get Odunze a little bit later. I don't, I, how do you think this is going to, this is going to play well, in your best guess? My feeling of the draft and I'm not a draft Nick. I, I stay away from it as much as I can, to be honest. Uh, it's yeah. just, it's just too much. It's just sensory overload for me um, at my age. So uh, I, I don't, I, I can't say, claim to be an expert. I, I think the draft approach should be uh, Joe Alt one. Uh, for me, it would be a Dunze or, or a wide receiver too, but I don't think they're going to do that. I, I kind of agree. I mean, I, I'm of the thinking uh, of that they, they should stick with, stay at nine. I think there's enough. I think there's enough. And again, they haven't really looked at that. I think there's enough talent that you can get a playmaker, a difference maker at nine. And I just think that, I think, I, I think that's, 
I think that's the better thing to do than, than stockpiling picks. I, I, I'm not saying they're past the point of stockpiling picks, but I think playmakers, difference makers, or the chance at one is more important to them right now because they have a chance to make this – isn't, this isn't a step-by-step approach anymore. They have a chance to make an impact next year after seeing what the Texans did. And I think they should if, – if you want to call it roll the dice, that's fine. But I think they should stay at nine and get what they can – but my sense is that I, and that was my first thought when they got Keenan Allen was, boy, I hope this doesn't take away from wide, wide receiver in the draft. But my thinking is that would. I think fans want the wide receiver. I don't know that the Bears do. I, I think I think Poles kind of feels he's that's he's got what he wants and, and is thinking long term with Keenan Allen, where I thought, well, maybe that might be a one year thing. I think he's thinking that's more long term. I think I think I think he's thinking he's set. And he's less likely to take a wide receiver. I think I agree with most Bears fans. You know, we're so quarterback wide receiver hungry here, starved here in Chicago, that when any wide receiver looks 10 times better than he, than, than he is, no matter how good he is. So any opportunity to get somebody like that, uh, I, I think I agree with the, just the general fandom that uh, they should take that opportunity. Yeah, Mark, I'm kind of leaning in that direction too. Like at nine, Maybe they take a guy like Odunze, but it's going to be really interesting to see how that plays out. I wanted to ask you about Ryan Poles' maybe philosophy right now in terms of these 30 visits. We know Caleb has visited. Would you have an issue if Ryan Poles didn't have a visit with Jaden Daniels, Drake May, not kind of completing that process of getting the full evaluation for the other two quarterbacks, or it's just set in stone, Caleb's the guy and that's that's all you kind that, of need. I, I think that's a really interesting part of the draft uh, because I think once I I, uh, I think once you're set on a guy, I think it's hard to evaluate the other guys. I just know from my own experience when I'm buying a car and I find the car I want, and I'm going to look at five cars, and I find the car I want early. I'm going to those other dealerships to look at, but I'm not really looking at it the same way mm. as I do because I know what I really want, you know. So I don't give it a fair evaluation. I think it's, I know it's a totally different realm, you know, cars or houses or whatever and football players, but I think that it's a human nature thing. And I think, I, and I, I think it's tough. It's difficult once you've got your heart, your mindset, not your heart, your mindset on something. I think it's hard. I think you should give that evaluation. What I'm saying is it's difficult to do, even if you do that, to really give them a fair shake, knowing what you want. And, you know, that's a tough thing because you never know which guy is going to be the Patrick Mahomes of this draft. I mean, this isn't like 2017 because neither Watson nor uh, uh, nor Mitch Trubisky were the same level of, of a prospect, surefire mm-hmm. generational prospect, uh, as Caleb Williams is. But on the other hand, having, you know, Ryan Pace having his heart set on Trubisky, I think kept him away from really seeing what he could have seen with, with, uh, with uh, Mahomes. And I think that was a factor there. So I guess I think it's a really interesting, it's a good question. answer would be, yes, he absolutely should. But I have to admit, I don't know what good it's going to do. Because I think I think once you realize, see that opportunity, I think it's really hard to be objective, just from a human nature standpoint, to be objective and see what you can get. But you absolutely should. And, you know, you, you never know when, a, you know, look at what if they were in for Jalen Carter last year and then they had to, would have to switch. You know, you never know when. Those types, you just, you always have to cover your bases. And believe me, the one thing we know about polls, he's a guy who's really, he, 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 he covers all his, all, he covers all his bases. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so I, I think, uh, I think he, I think he, he I, I think he'll do his due diligence, but again, it's really tough when you've got your heart, your, your mindset on, on, on one guy. Like I think, I think they do with uh, Caleb Williams. Yeah, I think that's how it's playing out. Before we continue our conversation with Mark Potash from the Sun Times, I got to tell everybody about Prize Picks. It's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. They are the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. It's you, just you against the numbers instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks. You pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. And look, March may be over, but the biggest moments in college basketball tip off this month. In April, be a part of the action with prize picks for both men's and women's college basketball. Get in on the playoff action and win up to 100 times your money on prize picks as you and the world's best players take the game to a new level during basketball's postseason. You can get Caitlin Clark for more than 33 and a half points and Paige Buecher for more than 27 points right now. Put $20 on it and you can win $60. Go to prizepicks.com slash CHGO and use that code CHGO for a first deposit match up to $100. That's prizepick.com slash CHGO. And again, use that code CHGO. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. 
And shout out to CD1 Price Cleaners. Uh, okay, I just want to double check something here. Yes, very important. Okay, yes, my friends at CD1 Price Cleaners, I am feeling so incredibly comfortable in my sweatshirt today because, hey, I got 30% off on their dry cleaning, which was sweet at CD1 Price Cleaners. I also, you know, you they do wash and fold laundry. They'll do your blankets. They'll do your comforters. They'll do your tailoring. They'll do your leather cleaning. They'll do your area rug cleaning. They will make you feel amazing, and they'll help your wallet out at the same time. And they do it quickly. Next day, same day. That's what they do. Not a week from now. And you'll know when it's ready because CD1 Price Cleaner sends you a text to let you know your order is ready for pickup. They do it all on site. It's the best. Visit chgo.cd1.com where you can pick from an in-store coupon or an online pickup and delivery coupon options available. You do not have to go to the store. They'll come right to you. All the options available at CD1 Price Cleaners. All right, Mark. Hey, let's rewind back here. Would you have kept Fields rather than do the deal with Pittsburgh in case Caleb gets hurt, in case Caleb's terrible? Well, that's what I was talking about. It would have been so tough to do. That, that would have been almost – that would have been untenable in this situation. You know, who gets who gets first-team reps? Boom. Right. There's your problem. Right off the bat. Now you've got something everyone's going to be talking about. And I don't know how much – the Bears historically have not really worried about outside noise. They, they're almost – sometimes they're ignorant of it. You know, sometimes they, they know about it, but they don't care about it. So me, I'm not sure how much of a factor that is, but even in the locker room, it was just Paul's a pretty level-headed guy. If he thought it would be an issue, which he must have, because obviously the choice without all the other uh, uh, dynamics uh, of a sixth round pick for a quarterback or keep the quarterback yourself, it's, it's you keep them, but you just couldn't do it. It would have been very difficult. Uh, he doesn't, especially after the year he had last year, does not need that. Uh, and it's a roll of the dice. You're, you're rolling the dice that your guy doesn't get hurt. Um, but yeah, that would have been, that, that, that would have been, that would have been a tough thing to do. So I guess I have to say I'm on record now as, you know, I'm not going to second guess. And, and if Kayla Williams get Kayla Williams gets hurt, uh, call out polls for not doing it because I'm saying right now in, in April that, uh, yeah, it, it, a tough move to make, uh, but the, 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 the right move. Cause that would, you know how, you know how that is. And mm-hmm. that would have been really tough. Well, some people are getting lost, by the way, in the Tyson Bajant as a backup thing. Like, they need a veteran. Are you a Bajant guy, Mark Potash? Um, you know, I have to see. <clears throat> I have to see how good this offense is. I have to see how good Shane Waldron is, and 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 I think that's a bigger. When you come to your backup, I think that's probably a bigger key uh, than anything else. And also, I don't know exactly what style uh, of quarterback Caleb Williams will be at the NFL level, and how much different it would be. Uh, you know, they never they never lined up a backup who was like Fields. I thought that was a little bit of a problem. But, you know, they won two games uh, 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 with Bajan last year. So, um, yeah, yeah, I guess what I guess I'm saying in a roundabout way, I don't know. I, I don't know. I, I like Bajan, though. I, I mean, I think you could do worse. Um, but uh, when they're a contender, if they start out five and one, six and one, uh, that's going to be really interesting to see. Hey, does it, the question will be: Does this team need a veteran backup in case something happens? So, um, so I guess my my answer would be yes. I like Tyson Bajan. I think he's got potential. Uh, I think he can be obviously can be a winning quarterback. He's won in wor- in, in in bad situations in a bad in a in a developing offense. I want to call it bad in a developing offense. He's he's won. So I think he can, I think he can handle it. And I do I like his gumption. I I, I like guys like that. I, you know I'm an it factor guy. So uh, I'm not sure he he didn't quite fit that for me that that role uh, of it guy uh, of an it factor guy, but, but I think he's, he's kind of like that. And, and I like that about him. So uh, right now I'm not saying that they'll end up with him, but, but I'm fine. I'm, I'm not worrying about, I'm worrying more about the center than I am the backup quarterback mm. at this point. So Mark right now, I mean, outside of the draft and whatever the bears end up doing with their remaining three picks after they draft Caleb, what are the biggest question marks that you have with this Bears team? You mentioned the center. You mentioned Shane Waldron. Are those two at the top of the list right now in terms of the questions you have for this team going into the 2024 season? Yeah, that and, and an edge rusher. Uh, and also some things that, that you really that, – that are just X, literal X factors that you don't know, like like uh, uh, is Jervon Dexter going to take the next step or do you need more help? everyone thinks because he wasn't super last year, well, you need more help there. Well, maybe you don't, maybe he's, maybe he's your, your upgrade, your, your upgrades from within, I think are always underrated. 
uh, you know, look at Brisker and Gordon. They 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 made mm-hmm. they were better last year, but they they really need to be much better this year. So I think if you get upgrades from within, I don't think that I don't I don't think you have quite that hole at uh, defensive tackle, defensive end. Now the pass rusher, that edge rusher, that's a little bigger issue. Uh, but again, I it's so hard to tell. How, you know, that's you don't want to reach. They're they're I don't think they're in a position where they have to reach now to get that because they at least have somebody on the other side who's proven to be the multiplier. That I'll be honest, I didn't think he was, but he sure looked like it in the last eight games. So I think you're even okay there. But edge rusher, uh, they there's I think they're set at center. I, whether they're good enough, I think that's a huge <laughs> issue. Mm-hmm. Um, and then left tackle, you know, what do you, you know, are you set there? Another one, are you set there? I think if you have an opportunity to upgrade there with Alt, uh, I think that's an opportunity you can't miss. So um, not, I guess the big, I guess the story is not, not as many holes as there's been in the past, right? I mean, it sure doesn't seem like it. I can't think of, I mean, what are the right answers? What are you, what do you guys think? I mean, is what, what's everyone else saying? Go ahead, Nick. I, I mean, it, it, I go back and forth on it. I think, look, Keenan Allen's 32 years old. Yeah, okay, fine, you're going to sign to a longer deal, longer term deal, multiple, you know, two years, three years, but he's still 32. Uh, Roma Dunze, who we're going to talk about coming up here, literally everybody thinks he's a, he's a plug-and-play guy. Right. That's tempting, very tempting. But to your point, I think it's, are you sold on Braxton Jones or are you not sold on Braxton Jones? Because, and if, and if Alt is there, would you do that? That's, I mean, that you can't you can't fault them for it, and maybe that saves them money down the line. And then, yeah, okay, we need someone to get to the quarterback, but do you love Jared Verse? I mean, Nick, you've done more on this than I have as far as the, you know the deeper dives. I don't know where you come out. I just look. I mean, when in terms of like weighing positional needs and what this draft kind of offers, there's not as many edge rushers at. I would say that would fall into being worthy of drafting right. at yeah. that ninth spot that yeah. you can get later on. Like the wide receivers are deep. Like you could, yes, you can get yeah. Roma Dunze at nine, but you can get a bunch of other guys if you were to have some kind of trade back scenario. So I wonder if I'm Ryan Poles, like, can I almost try to address two spots of need if I find that trade back partner from nine? and still get playmakers that fill needs on this team. So it's it's a very interesting situation because I think yeah. like what we're all saying, it's that three tech and you want to see how Javon Dexter can, you know, just take that next step in year two, but it's three tech, another wide receiver. You need that edge rusher. And like you, Mark um, Potash, I do believe that, yes, they have guys that play center, but I don't see the long-term yeah guy that's currently on this football team so if yeah. holes wants to upgrade yeah. that as well like yeah, i can definitely see that happen i think that you know the center usually uh you, you kind of kiss it off or you figure they can you know if they got, got enough guys around them i think center's a more important position now than it's ever been but yeah. it's a kind of an uh, i guess maybe an irony or interesting is that you know the last thing polls did in kansas city was he got uh, creed humphrey uh, mm-hmm. he identified creed humphrey uh, uh, in the draft for them and that's that's been one of their biggest that's one of the biggest reasons uh, not only him, but the you know, their line in general, why they won the Super Bowl again with, you know, with all the salary cap issues they've had. So he's he's really, you know, he's an offensive lineman. Uh, Ian Cunningham's an offensive lineman. Chris Morgan, I think, is really good. I don't really get to know the coaches like we used to, but I can tell. I think I, think I know enough to know he's really good. There's a reason why they kept him. So they have every reason to get center. So Poles did really well. He, he, he got his center with the Chiefs and – it's funny, like he, that's the one kind of area he really hasn't he hasn't hit on. He he tried. I mean, he's tried, but and again, he's got Bates, who's never who never really started much at, at center. I think one or two times, and uh, so it's so it's a uh, it's interesting. There's one thing I want to tell you. I, I do want to point out though, with regard to offensive guys, I think there's a factor that we in Chicago are not really used to that can play a part into supporting cast stuff. And that is that if Shane Waldron is as good as he is supposed to be, and if Caleb Williams hits, this will be an offense that makes players better and gives you guys, turns Tyler Scott's into, into prime receivers or Devonte Adams, all those good quarterbacks make those second round picks into first round picks. We've in Chicago, I've never seen that you know, rarely. I mean, a little bit with Cutler, with Alshon Jeffrey, and even Bernard Berrien, and he, he had that a little bit of a factor. Uh, but, but besides him, 
we've never even seen that. And, 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 you know, we just have to look at the whole green Bay thing. That's all they've done is turn second round, second and third round guys into top flight guys. So, and also uh, he makes your left tackle better. He makes your, a good offense makes every player better. So if, 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 if they hit like they think they're going to hit at quarterback, at, uh, at offensive coordinator, and with an offense, a real NFL offense, all of a sudden, a lot of these problems we're used to lamenting, like we are, we're kind of conditioned to do it, aren't going to be as big a problem as you think, because I think the offense and the quarterback will make players better. And that's something we're just not familiar with in Chicago. We're not. Hey, Mark, your first year at the Sun-Times was what year? Uh, 1987. All right, and your first year on the code doing stuff around the Bears, at least supporting the, 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 ta- uh, the team. 95, 96. Okay, yeah. all right. So you are, I mean, you're, you're a straight legend. Let's just, just, let's call it what it is here. 95, 96, through the Cutler era, you obviously grew up with the 85 Bears and all that stuff. Uh, I, I don't know. You're the 69 Bears. No, there we get on my bad, yeah. my bad. I don't want to in one and 13. You wonder why I am like I am. Yeah, well, right. And hey, shout out to my guy at Obradovich and, and that whole crew and Johnny Morris, man, still our all time leading receiver. There we go. But I'm, I, I guess my, my point is, or my question is this the most fun you've ever had with this team as, as a reporter, not forget to take an 85 out of that, out of it was when, uh, as a reporter, yes, working somewhat. You don't. Have, you wouldn't. Have, didn't have to be there every day or whatever. But just like sometime around the team, your most fun time was when. Well, it's kind of weird. I was still off the beat in '01 when they had that unbelievable year with. All, and I, I was covering home games, and so I was at. I was at those the, the Mike Brown. I covered the Mike Brown games back to back. As far as actual excitement, that was the most I've been. I've seen at you know covering you know covering the Bears that you know that season. Uh, because it kind of came out of nowhere. I'd covered the team in, in, in 2000 and, and, and that it just looked like they were spinning their wheels. And, uh, and so I'd say that was probably the most exciting. I think the, the 2010 season was the best. I thought that, that where the offensive defense kind of came together, you had Cutler and then you had Julius Peppers that defense was good, but I'll be honest, there's not, you know, it's funny. You asked me, I'm thinking, I'm thinking through like, you know, 2018 was really good, but, then it kind of faded quickly to, and, and it wasn't even like real, you know, a lot of the, we, we were, we were, you know, you had good Rex, bad Rex in the middle of one of the greatest bear seasons ever in 06. You had the whole Trubisky offensive thing with Matt Nagy in t- 2018. There was always something, there's always something that takes the edge off a of bears team. One of the best bears teams was I think in 20, thir- no, 2012, when they started like seven and one Mm -hmm. and they still had the lovey defense and they had Cutler and then Cutler gets hurt. I think, yeah, I think it was Cutler injury. And so even, I thought that was one of the better, more exciting, you know, more promising seasons. And then, so I guess the point is, you know, it's really hard to answer that question because it seems like there's always, ever since they won only, I always say, the Ditka Bears are known for winning the Super Bowl, but winning only one Super Bowl. You know, there's always something as a Bear fan that that, that takes away from it. It's not like they won three Stanley Cups, you know, or or six or six NBA titles. So it's a tough question to answer. I, there have just been moments like 01, uh, uh, 06, that start, uh, Rex Grossman's MVP start in 06 uh, yeah, um, with the Miracle in the Desert, uh, 2010. Uh, but boy, there's all 20, 2013. Uh, th- that was, that was like a revelation. You got to remember Mark Trestman was a revelation on offense in that 2013 season. They were second in the NFL in scoring. Uh, it was, they scored like 40 points at Heinz field, which somebody, nobody had done for a while. I mean, that, that was exciting, but again, there's always something, right. That's kind of the theme of the bears. So that's why I'm a little, that takes me back to what I said originally about all the optimism we feel about this year in the back of your head. If you've been around as long as I have, you're thinking, well, what can go wrong? It seems like too, Mark, all yeah, those yeah, things that qu- answer to that question. I apologize for that, but you know, that's part of being a bears fan. I, I loved the answer. I, that yeah, was, no, it, it spoke speaking truth to power here. Not exactly to power, but you, you have the point. <laughs> Go ahead. And just kind of listening to all the things that you know, there's that one blemish. It it kind of goes to the quarterback in some way, some some shape, right? Like something about the quarterback is going not how it's supposed to, but you know, potentially Caleb Williams can absolve some of those issues that the Bears have been having at that position for for years now. Mark, is are the 2024 Bears for Bears fans that are riding that? 
you know, that momentum, that high, like is are the playoffs too out there for bears fans to really dream about it? Because seeing how CJ Stroud and the Houston Texans did with their season last year. And I would say that the bears probably have a better roster than what Houston had last year. Are the playoffs, should they be out of the question or is that actually something no, that may be no, a reality? I think you should, I don't think it's a playoffs or bus situation. <clears throat> Unless they don't make it because of their defense, uh, mm. but as, as long as their defense holds up, I think I think, uh, I, I, I think you, all you really what you really want to see this year is you want to see this offense look like a it, it can be a real NFL offense in the quarterback. But that's you know become an NFL qu- a quarterback. But uh, that said, uh, playoffs absolutely are are a reasonable uh, goal or, or expectation uh, for the Bears this year. Um, the division is not is stronger than it's been, but uh, you know it's it's not something that, that you can't that a team like the Bears uh, can you know can't overcome. Uh, the, the Houston example, I think, is always a great example. A lot of people don't buy it, but you know we are, in in the past we've always like looked back at best case scenarios about teams that have come up and and, and they don't compare to the Bears at all. But the Houston thing is the like you said the Bears. The Bears are better now than Houston was last year, and 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 can Shane Waldron, uh, uh, you know, do the do those same same things uh, that Bobby Slowick did? Uh, the quarterback again was not the was not even the first pick; he was the second pick. The wide receivers, I mean, uh, the Bears are have better wide receivers, at least you know, on paper, you know. So anyway, I guess the point is, yeah, the Bears could absolutely be the um, uh, be the be this year's Texans. And, uh, and, uh, you know, if Dar- Dar- Darnell Wright has to play the Laramie Tunsil role, I guess that's probably the <laughs> one thing that has to happen that would, ma- that would make them on the same level, you know, overall. But other than that, uh, they have everything that, that Houston had, uh, including the prospect. And then you got a first year and, th- and their first year OC is a three has three years of play calling experience, which you, with the Texans did not. So they have, you, they, that's a very fair comparison, a very real expectation, but I always say, I also say, if they, I don't think it's playoffs or bust, depending on how the season goes, as long as they make take that next step and look like they're going to be there and the quarterback thing works out, um, then then I still think it'll be a successful season because they're, you know, and you hate to say it, but at least uh, on paper, they're starting over at quarterback. They, they just literally are. Yep. But they're starting over with the consensus number one overall pick. They're starting right? over with the wind at their back. That's yep. the difference. Yep. <laughs> hey, hey, Mark. We really appreciate the time. Uh, I always, I love, I always love having you on. So, and you're you're always gracious with your time. So, thank you. Uh, last one, real quick on the on the way out here. What do you think happens with the stadium? I know we got you know a lot of ground to cover before that becomes official. But what's your best guess? That's a really tough one. People have asked me about that, and I've always been of the thinking uh, that the bear that that the bears are were, were really want to be in Arlington Heights, and we're going to be in Arlington Heights. And and, and I always say not an out now bluff Chicago, but uh, because I think if push came if uh, if Arlington Heights held their ground, I think they would make that move. But I always felt like they would be back at Arlington Heights. They would end up back at Arlington Heights because that's really what they wanted, and that gives them everything that they did want. I'm not so sure now. I I, I always say this. Uh, 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 I think they uh, they they wanted Arlington Heights, like Ted Phillips or, or or whoever was actually in charge of that wanted Arlington, Heights. and then they hired a guy who really wants to be in Chicago, in uh, in Kevin Warren, and that's so typical of what the Bears do. They always, you know, they hire the you know the they they can never align the GM and the coach or the coach and the quarterback. It's just always they're always one year off, and it's that's that's just consistent with the way they do business. And that doesn't mean again, same thing though. They're going to end up better off. They're going to have a great stadium in the city, which I, as a fan, I would rather have. Or they're going to have this great, uh, great situation in Arlington Heights eventually. But uh, say, you know, same thing as the quarterback situation. I always say that that the at least now the Bears' big decisions, at least uh, you, you're going to end up with something that should be good. And so, uh, so I think it's good. So to answer your question. Um, I think if Arlington Heights, I think there's still a chance if Arlington Heights comes back and say, "Okay, we'll 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 play we'll play ball with you." I think they'll go there. But on the other hand, uh, if they can jump through all the hoops they have to, and there are many, I still they they will they they'll 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 take the Chicago deal because I think Kevin Warren really wants the Chicago deal. But a lot of hoops to jump through it in Chicago, 
uh, especially after that vote in Kansas City with their stadiums. It's, it's going to be a tough sell. A lot, a lot of runway, but listen, your heart's in the right place. That's all that matters, Mark. You're with me, and they belong in the city. We don't need to be going out to Arlington Heights. We go out to Lake Forest for practice. Let's keep them in the city. I, hey, hey, Mark, we'll see you soon, hopefully. The draft right around the corner, all the things. But the, thanks for making time for the podcast today. We really appreciate it. I'm looking forward to it, Mark. Nick, thanks, thanks for having me on your show. Appreciate it. Mark Potash, you, the GOAT from the, from the Chicago Sun-Times as I transition to the second oh, yeah. half of the show. Look at that, Nick. Let's go. Let's put on let's 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 put on the glasses. Let's flip the hat around and let's talk about our great friends, our phenomenal partners at Miller Lite. What are you going to do with our picks? I listen. I we're going to talk about Roma Dunze coming up. That's my guess. But uh, the Bears have made some horrendous selections over the years, and they, they get a couple ones right. But one selection that is always correct. You know what I'm talking about? It's the ice cold Miller Lite. Who? They just give you what the beer lover wants with their light beer. That's right, the delicious taste. And that's why they brew a light beer that's light on calories, not on taste. It's the point of having a beer if you can't taste it. I'd love to taste a Miller Lite right now. Poppy the puppy, can you bring that over to me? Get it done. Uh, Hey, till kickoff comes around again, it's going to be a minute. But you have time to enjoy the beer that tastes like the season. Miller Lite, great taste, 96 calories. If you want to get Miller Lite delivered right to your door, Visit MillerLite.com slash C-H-G-O football. It's a great way to support the show and your taste buds. Or, of course, you can pick up Miller Lite pretty much anywhere they sell beer. It's Miller time. Celebrate responsibly. Miller Brewing Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The home of the Brewers and Adam Hogan now roots for. 96 calories and 3.2 carbs per 12 ounces. Go get yourself a Miller Lite. And you can drink a Miller Lite while you're, you know, watching the Iowa women's basketball Team dominate you, Congo, Caitlin Clark. So get a Miller Lite while you're watching all the great sports this weekend. And then you got to check out Foco, and you can get fitted out in the best sports gear around. And obviously they have hoodies, shoes, signs, bobbleheads, and literally everything in between. If you're going to a basketball or hockey game, you can show off your love with team-branded friendship bracelets. I have five bracelets. They're not the ones from Foco, so I got to upgrade my gear. I can do that by going to Foco, and whether it's jackets, beachwear, or even overalls, there's something for fans for almost every single occasion. And the set decorations that you see when we're doing our CHGO Bears show and all of our CHGO shows, well, Foco has donated a few awesome pieces for our sets, so go show them some love, and you can do that by going to foco.com or click the link in the description below for all non presale items, use promo code CHGO10 for 10% off. All right. Shout out to Potash. Shout out to you. Shout out to Fridays. Shout out to the 120 Club. If you're hanging out with Braggs and Cody at Wrigley today, I'm running over there after this show because I love them and I miss them. And yeah, it's Friday. But uh, hey, uh, if you are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button Monday through Friday at noon, CHGO Bears. And of course, Pre-game, post-game, whatever day the Bears play, breaking news. We're here for you. Thank you so much for the support. All right, throw up the graphic here, Sir Lawrence Benedetto, as we stare deeply at Rome Adunze. We're doing, I'm going to call them the Carm Five Things to Know About Every Draft Pick leading up to the draft here. And today we are looking at Rome. And so here I go. Uh, Number one, 140 targets last season. 43 of them came from the slot. We outlined that with Malik Neighbors this week. Both Adunze and Neighbors can play wide. They can play the slot. Neighbors did it a little bit more, but Adunze certainly can do it. 16 games is number two. As I looked at his last two seasons at Washington, over 100 receiving yards. This dude has been very, very consistent. Um, you know, one of the, obviously that's what it takes to be at the top 10 in the draft, but it, it, there is. Uh, a lot of, of meat on the bone as far as his consistency, and he's gotten better and better and better and better, everything you would want. Now, uh, everybody loves him as a jump ball guy. The numbers tell you it as well. 70% is number three. He caught 70% of 50-50 balls last season. That's fourth in the NCAA per pro football reference. And then he isn't as dynamic down the field. Neighbors is you know was tops 20-plus yards catches, 30-plus yards. Adunze more underneath. 19 yards or under, 55 of his 73 catches last year. That's also per pro football focus. And then as I try to find something personal on him, 
Uh, Rome has got a phenomenal personality. And if you go to his own website, that's right. You can buy T-shirts. You can buy hoodies. He's basically got his own merchandise line going on of Roma Dunze, R-O, Roger Federer, Roma Dunze. I kind of liked it. Sort of a Nicholas Moriano spirit. But, you know, the title of the show today is, is it basically, you know, all things pointing to Roma Dunze and the Bears drafting him. And, Nick, I think he's going to be there at 9, and I think that the Bears could even trade down and get creative if they want to risk it to get him, uh, which if they really, really want him, obviously they'll take him at 9. But I think you, I think he might be there 12, 13. So, you know, there's a million ways we could talk about how the draft's going to go. But it seems to me that, you know, if you were to bet your life on who the Bears were taking, Rome Modunze seems like the safest bet. Yeah, it does seem like that at this point right now. And unless one team from the back end knows that they need to have a Roma Dunes, they trade up to go get them. I feel like whatever scenario you're kind of looking at with these top, you know, 10 picks, like Rome does fall to the Bears at nine. But I just feel like, you know, with what the Bears have at wide receiver and again, the depth of this this wide receiver class that. Maybe they love Roman Dunze, but if they can still find a way to address another position of need and still get a really, really capable wide receiver, they would also take that route. But Roman Dunze, the, the stat that I liked from your five uh, top takeaways there, Mark, the contested catch, which was 70%. I don't remember the exact number from um, Malik Neighbors, but less 46. 46. And I think about it like this in the NFL. You're not getting that much cushion like you would in college. And again, it. There's going to be condensed spaces. Well, Roma Dunze excels. He excels in that area where there's not a lot of space to work with, where you're facing these tough DBs and you just need to make a catch. Who's going to be more physical? Who's going to have better hands, more better positioning? Rome has shown that he can do that. And they're just, I mean, you can go watch his highlights, just some of his top plays where he's he's covered. But somehow Roman Dunze comes down with the football, is able to make a big play for his offense. And I think that maybe some people look at that part of his game like, oh, you can't rely on that. Well, you can if you're a specialist at it. And I think Roman Dunze has trained himself, has really perfected that part of his craft to he wins. It's not 50-50. It's, you know, 70-30 in his case. So I really do like that aspect and what it can add to a Bears offense adding in Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, and he doesn't have to be that guy in year one if the Bears do elect to draft him, but he should still have that mindset. Like, I can still go out there and dominate, but when it's his time to take over once Keenan Allen departs, like, he'll be ready to go. So it makes a lot of sense why it may be inevitable, right? The Bears just take the their best BPA, their best player available. It happens to be Roman Dunze, and you keep that offense rolling with talented playmakers. So, okay, let, let's go back to where the neighbors versus Adunze outside chance that they're both there. It's possible. Look, you're, you're, I mean, there's a zillion rumors, everything out there from the Arizona Cardinals trading out uh, for somebody, Minnesota, to come up to four and draft JJ. There's rumors of five quarterbacks going in the top eight. I doubt, or, you know, maybe the Bears could trade out of, at nine to go back a couple. Um, and get a, get a lot because somebody wants to come up and get a QB that could happen. There's also you know the Chargers could get stuck. What happens if nobody wants to come up? All right, you're the Chargers at five. Nobody really wants to trade up with you. What are they going to do? That that is that is Jim Harbaugh and that is a GM coming over from Baltimore who they're they're not the types that take wide receivers. So, you know, what what what, ex, what where what would they do in that situation? Could the Bears possibly move up to 5 lightly, not have to pay a ton to get there? Like I, the Chargers are very interesting here. So, uh, but I I'm just saying that it's un, it's unlikely that the Chargers take neighbors at 5, right? And then maybe the Giants take a quarterback at 6. You have a first offensive player going off to the Falcons at 8. T Tennessee at seven are are they taking neighbors and or Adunze? Maybe, but maybe not. And my 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 question to you here, Nick, is I was I'm thinking about neighbors has better twitchiness. He can get mm -hmm. away from you. Adunze can body up with you, and he's better high pointing the ball, and he's strong as hell. But when you try to 
figure out what's going to play in the NFL, he's going to be, you know, like some cornerbacks will be Kyler Gordon's, but he's also going to be going up against bigger, stronger dudes. Is that going to translate as well as it did in college when he's going up against, you know, lesser talent, his ability to high point it? Is that going to be there? I think it will. Or, but if you look at neighbor's tape, the dude is just bursting away from guys Mm -hmm. that you, I mean, that is going to transfer. So I don't know, like if if they were both there, what the bears would do is an interesting, uh, it's, 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 it's obviously I, neither of us know the answer, but I wonder how that debate's going at Hallis Hall. Yeah. And I think, I mean, one thing they'll both weigh too, is the, you know, RAS, the, the, the RAS scores too. They look into that heavily and seeing which one kind of, outperforms the other but both those guys are they they fit the bill of what the bears are looking for in terms of that that position i think neighbors still would technically have the better scores but still you can't look they have a different flavor it's like a different flavor of ice cream some people like chocolate some people like vanilla or, or strawberry it's like what do you like and if that if polls decides that he likes that bigger bodied guy that can win those contested catch then you go with odunze but neighbors does have i mean he has blazing speed they're both good route runners too i, I don't want to uh slight odunze's route running but neighbors just has a way of creating space and do, doing it so effectively but i think that's what it really comes down to especially if both those guys are there and they're r- graded really similarly on your board like what flavor do i want what do i want for this offense moving forward for the next you know, four to hopefully 10 plus years with Caleb Williams. And I don't, I don't know if you can go wrong to be completely honest, whether it's Odunze or neighbors, if they're both there at nine. So it, it would be a fascinating and interesting conversation to have if that's how it plays out on draft night. Let, let me just, let's throw the scenario at you. Somehow, some way the Cardinals decide they're going to trade out and somebody comes up and drives a quarterback at four. JJ McCarthy goes four. Or whatever. McCarthy goes two out of nowhere, and Jaden Daniels goes four. First four are quarterbacks. The Chargers are sitting there. They're calling the Bears. They're not asking for the end of the earth. You can go up to five and get Marvin. You doing that? You come out of the draft with Caleb Her- Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. I'd say it's unlikely. Unlikely. But... There is a little smoke around Arizona right now who says that they are wide open for business. And and Marvin's not working out. And some people are saying neighbors is better. I, I mean, I, Mark, what I, so okay, what do we what do we let's make this like continue this scenario? What am I giving up to go up to five to get potentially Marvin uh, Harrison Jr.? What am I uh, giving up? You're like, giving uh, you, uh, you're you're give I don't know, dude. I, I, I'd have yeah. To, okay. Like, so, uh, multiple I'm multiple not, I'm not doing multiple pi- multiple picks. Not a one next year. I don't I don't think I'm doing that. I especially I wonder For, how I wonder how much higher on Ryan Pohl's draft board Marvin Harrison is over neighbors. Maybe he's not. Like that's a thing too. It's like if he's not, then I don't look. Marvin Harrison Jr. is amazing. He's he is amazing, and I think the Cardinals will end up taking him, but. I wonder. I wonder if those two guys are are graded very similarly um, on on Pulse's draft board. So the need to go get a guy that are right a a one or one a one b. I don't know if I'm doing that. Especially again, we're making up this scenario, not knowing exactly the draft capital that it would take to move up four spots to go to five. But for me, I'm not doing it. As much as it would be so cool to have Caleb Williams and Marvin Harrison Jr. Well, let me be clear. I think that Cardinals are taking Marvin at four, but I also am reading what everyone's saying and, or speculating and it's a zillion forms of speculation here. So who the hell knows what's going on? That's out there that the Cardinals could be willing, you know, Hey, what's somebody willing to come up and pay? And then if you're, if you're the chargers, what do you, what are you doing there? Because you're you're oh you'd be overdrafting an edge, you'd be overdrafting a three tech, right? You don't you're not the type that like builds with wide receivers. That's not that's mm-hmm. not their mo, their new mo at least. So and then I don't know what it was if the Bears could get Marvin. It, it, it was it wasn't that long ago that if you asked literally anyone who's the biggest guaranteed Hall of Famer in this draft, and everyone said Marvin. 
Now, all of a sudden, Arizona, who's di- dying for a wide receiver, might be considering moving out of four. That's how it is, man. The draft, they have all these fluctuations, like some guys at the top of the mountain, and then he becomes at the bottom of the mountain. And then, then it always ends up kind of going, I think, going back to what the original thing was. So it'll be interesting. All right. Uh, let's see here. We covered, we covered Rome. We covered Marvin. We covered the stadium. A uh, law. What do we got in the? We got any super loves here? I believe, believe we do. Well, we Loop do it. have real quickly, Mark. Oh yeah, we, we've got Nick's thing. That's what I forgot about. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so we uh, we updated the Bears 100 with our top 50 uh, prospects here, and you can actually, if you're a diehard, get access to that by going to allchgo.com slash Bears 100. You can see where our rankings are at, and as we Adam and I were kind of just filling out and. The rest of that board, you know, I was just kind of doing a little bit more film work, watching some guys. I just want to highlight one of the players that I think caught my eye. And I think someone that maybe Bears fans could pay a little bit more attention to. It happens to actually be Rome Adunze's teammate on Washington, the defensive end slash edge rusher Braylon Trice. Uh, 6'3", 245, 49 total tackles in 2023, seven sacks, one forced fumble. And then his game against Texas in the Sugar Bowl, eight quarterback pressures. Uh, he was a guy that just really popped and not knowing, um, I hadn't watched too much of him, but here's what I literally wrote on him that's in the Bears 100. And I'll even give you a little sneak peek. He came at, at number 48 on the board here. Uh, I put down Braylon Trice plays with an extremely fast motor, and it's evident on every snap. He has a quick get off and likes to use his rip move to get inside of opposing tackles. When he lands his go-to move, it could be really effective combined with his quick bursts off the line. He consistently wins or consistently will run after ball carriers from the backside of plays. When he works upfield on his rushes, he'll spin off a blocker and pursue ball carriers. That's how he forced a fumble in the Sugar Bowl against Texas last season. And when he engages with blockers. He shows strong hands and creates some pop with his strikes. Trice does need to continue adding to his pass rush moves. There were many times in that Texas game where Trice used that rip move and couldn't get past the tackles, even though it looks like he was held in those plays. Remember, the rip move will not be flagged for holding. He rushed primarily from a two-point stance, so he would need to show he can be more of a hand-in-the-dirt type of player and Matt Eberflus' defense in. At the size that he is, a little bit more on the smaller size for what I think Eberflus would like out of traditional defensive ends, but Braylon Trice, he was impressive and you can read, um, you know, just my takeaways from him, Adam's takeaways from him. We have plays in there, game notes in the bears 100. So definitely look to uh, get that. If you're not a diehard already, I've actually watched a bunch of his highlights and I'm like, how the hell is this guy mid second round? He looks yeah. dynamic to me. I mean, he's yeah, in the backfield the, all the time. Mm-hmm. Yep, it's, it's a burst. It's and it's the effort too. Like there, there are a lot of times where, again, like I was reading, like he'll go upfield, but he's not taking himself out of the play. He's tracking down the ball care. And when we talk about the hits principles and what Eberflus is going to chart every single time at practice games, like Trice is going to be on the positive end of those things because he's already doing that. And if he were to be drafted by the Bears, like. That would, I think, not only continue, but become even more prominent in his game. So I do like what he brings as a defensive end. But like I said, a little bit on the smaller side. Big day for new diehards, by the way, uh, who can get access to our Bears 100. So you can join in and also be a part of the diehard family, which is ever growing. Thank you so much to Carrie, who, quite frankly, I've always looked up to Carrie and the way that he's gone about his business. Carrie's a guy that, uh, you know, he plays first, but he'll also catch for you. And, uh, yeah, if he's open, that that, that shot's going down. Carrie's the man. Get James, they call him Big Game James for a reason. When it's all on the line, when you need a bucket, you give the ball to James, and he delivers. Thank you, James. And our guy, Michael. Michael's the guy that not only will he go for the big job and take care of that, but when he was doing little things in his life – he put forth the effort there as well. No job was too big or too small for Michael, and that's what I appreciate about Michael. And then our guy, Adam, better than Hogue, better than Johns, better than my guy, Adam Capes, the best Adam that I know that I've never met. Adam, welcome in. And, of course, Jason, 
Not Friday the thirteenth. This guy, this guy scares you with his talent more than his uh, the terror. Jason is a guy that just it's frightening what he's able to do in multiple realms. The way he listens to a podcast, the way he dominates at home, the way he dominates at work. Jason's my guy, and Justin. Sure, we had to trade you, but that's not because we didn't love you, Justin. That's not because you didn't give your all, and we know that you're going to go be a success wherever you go. But we're happy to have you back right here with us, Justin, in the diehard situation thank you so much and then brett yeah you were nick's friend and you played softball (laughs) and then i found you and then i cut you because you were terrible but that's you still had talent you still had want and you said you would come back better than ever and now you're here you are better than ever you are the best brett you've ever been this is the best choice you've made brett welcome to the diehard family Uh, real quickly about brett he actually just proposed to his girlfriend last weekend so there you go, Brett. Good job to you. And is Brett friend. playing this year? Is he? Is he? Uh, I don't care. Uh, I don't know. Is he invited? I mean, maybe he can come up for the. We'll have to have tryouts because as a championship team that we are, not everyone's just guaranteed to. Well, maybe we just need people. But uh, yes, maybe. I don't know. He could be there. I mean, Brett's got talent. Uh, I just he just needs to be groomed. Got to unlock I, it. Yeah, I didn't get an opportunity to work with him prior to the season last year, and this year I, I I'll dedicate more time. So Brett, it, it's it's actually on me. It's not your fault. You were miscast by the pre- previous regime. Kadic didn't know what he was doing, or whoever was running the team. I I I'll take you to the next level, Brett. I got you. Uh, you do have to start at the bottom of the order though, and work your way up <laughs> to get to where Nick's at. All right. Um. Hey. Thank you to everybody who listened. Our super chats today are light, but let's get to those on the way out here. Because I'm heading to the 120 club, and Lawrence Benedetto's headed to be the best Benedetto that he could do. Oh, hands down, 9.99 CHGO care package incoming in care of the throat goat. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's my guy. Um, coughing is down today. Not perfect, but I think I'm getting better. Yeah. I got confirmation earlier. I'll be on a limited work schedule next week, so I'll see you live next week. Have a great weekend and bear fucking down. Hands down, it's always better when the show, when you're in it live. So thank you so much. And another four ninety nine from Hands Down. Shout out to CH Joe. I'm standing for my stand. It's that the Bears trade back at number nine. All right. Hey, it's I, I don't have a great feel for it, to be honest. It's I'm just having a lot of fun watching all the hypotheticals out there. Here's a $5 hypothetical from Clayton Stoker. Hypothetical, you can see the future. Alt Adunze Turner become first ballot Hall of Famer. Who are you taking? And why is that position best for the Bears situation? Okay, there you go, Nick. You get a Hall of Fame left tackle, you get a Hall of Fame receiver, or you get a Hall of Fame edge. Who are you taking? Crap, that's a really good question. I think I'm taking the Hall of Fame left tackle um, as as the cornerstone piece to make sure Caleb Williams stays upright. Premium position, obviously. Guaranteed to have stability at that spot. Obviously, having a Hall of Fame career. Um, it's not to say that, you know, not having a Hall of Fame wide receiver or edge rusher isn't good, but I think I'm just weighing it a little bit more to the left tackle if I had that option. What would you do, Mark? I mean, if you're if you're telling me they're all Hall of Famers, I'll take the edge. I mean, I'm okay. going to take a Hall of Fame guy who gets to the quarterback every single week and wrecks offenses and take my chances with finding anyone else. Those dudes are hard, the hardest to find. Um. I think you go wrong. I mean, there's no going I mean, wrong on this one. There's no going wrong. But if I, yeah. you tell me I have a Hall of Fame guy get into the QB, the hardest thing to do in football, that's that's what I would do. Excellent question by you, Clayton. That yeah. was fun. And Lou Bear Down, ninety nine cents. Thank you, Lou Bear Down. That was a Braggs. A Braggs does thank you for that. And Braggs apologizes mm-hmm. for yelling at somebody for giving a dollar the other day. That was a terrible comment by Greg Braggs. And Greg Braggs didn't mean it at all. He loves everybody who. Gives a dollar, gives no dollars, gives a thousand dollars. We appreciate every single listener mm-hmm. here, um, except for the ones that troll us non end. But we, hey, we know that you're about to love us to the end of the earth, too. Even Pizzatola, my guy. Hi, Pizzy. Happy Friday. Uh, Nick, have a great weekend, buddy. You too, Mark. Have any big plans or chilling this weekend? I actually have a very, uh, you know, I'm I'm playing in a tennis little Friday night tournament tonight. So anybody who's showing up on the south side is going down at XS Tennis. That's right. Uh, I'm coming to play. And then 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm going to the Cub game right after this. So get there in the, about the third inning, stay for three innings, go home. That's my plan. It's freezing out there, but I'm gonna I'm gonna show I'm gonna, I'm gonna shake it, shake a hand. 999 from Matt Nuko on the way up. Been a busy week. Haven't been able to jump to an, into a live until today. Getting so close to the draft. I'm giddy. I've always wanted Caleb Williams in Rome. If he's there, pull the trigger, pulls happy Friday. You might get your wish, Nuku. Yeah. You, you might very well get your wish. So um all right. Be a fun time. Poppy the Puppy says, have a great weekend, too. Did a great job today, buddy, down sleeping during the show. The dulcet sounds of yours truly, love. <laughs> All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you Monday at noon. We all city like the mayor.